It's time for highlights from tonight's hard-hitting high school football action. Sports Extra starts now. Sponsored by New West Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Well, it's hard to believe that we are here already at this point of the season. For Sports Extra, I'm Nate Brown flying solo in studio on this Friday night. And it's amazing to think that we've already reached week four of the high school football season. The wild card race is starting to take shape as teams are jockeying for position as we reach the midway point of the year with one of the best showdowns taking place in our own backyard. Ogallala looking to unseat the stars of Kearney Catholic and their perfect mark. We jump to the second half. Brett Mahoney buying time with his feet finds Aaron O'Brien who makes the sliding catch going out of bounds. What a snag from him. Mahoney dropping back once more going for the home run ball. But how about the great defense downfield from the Indians Cameron Zink breaking up the surefire touchdown. Ogallala's turn and Harry Kasky skies one towards the left but Mason Mandernock has other ideas as the senior gets a pass breakup of his own. The air game didn't quite work the last time, so the Stars opt to keep it on the ground as Mahoney weaves his way forward for a huge gainer. That's going to help to set them up in Ogallala territory. And on the doorstep, the fourth down conversion. It's a QB keeper as Mahoney. He's in for the scores. The KC Stars looking A-OK. -okay. They come away with the 24-6 win. AC Patriots of Adam Central. Hey, they're going against the Cozad Haymakers at home. It's already 15 to 12 at the start of the second. Starting the half off, Haymaker quarterback is going to throw this one deep to the wide receiver, Cord Chitka, for a huge gain, and their fans are stoked. Haymakers, Nolan Wedevic, he's going to follow that up with the gain, the quarterback keeper that's going to help get him to the end zone. That makes it 18 to 12 in favor of Cozad and in a desperate attempt to score Adam Central. They're going to launch this one up, but the pass is going to be pulled down instead by Kozad's Nolan Wedevic. Kozad, they go on to defeat Adam Central 18 to 15, their fourth win of the season. To Grand Island we go. The Islanders rushing onto the field, ready to take on the Fremont Tigers. Start of this one, Tigers starting with the ball, and Brandon Webbles with it, passing to Drew Sellen so quick you can't even see Sellen rushing at 10 yards. A good pickup for the Tigers. The ball back with Webbles once more is Micah Moore. He's going to catch it and rushes down past the 30. Some field, gaining some field for the men in white. Now it's Gish's turn and from the line, the ball's going to come up and drop right into the hands of Dylan Sextro right on the sideline. Catches the ball nearly at the 20 yard line. But Sextro, he's not done. He's still got lots of fuel in him. The ball going flying down the field from Kite and Fife. He hooks up with Sextro in the end zone. They go on to win a close one, 17-15 over the Tigers. The Centura Centurions and St. Cecilia Blue Hawks take the field for a game out in Cairo. Five minutes to the end of the second half when Centura's Bladen Garcia with the ball, ready to pass, but it's going to he's going to pass it to a running back when Cecilia's Jaden Languis starts to play with a false start. Garcia. Back in with the ball, passing it to Tanner Simford, who throws it right, gets some yardage, but he's taken down. Time running out in the second half. Butler is back with the catch down the field, gaining some yards before Noah Mulgoza takes him down. Centura back with it is Tanner Sidorn. Shoots the ball down field right into the hands of Bryce Gorecki right before the end of the half. Does not result in any points on the board at that juncture, but St. Cecilia coming away, doubling him up, 28-14. For some teams, it's gut check time as they look to rebound from a tough start to the new year. And some of those matchups, they're headed your way, but we're open in the second half with a pair of six-man squads that you might want to get your popcorn ready for. The Wallace Wildcats at Wilcox Hildreth, the Falcons' home field down in Hildreth. Well, we're going to start this one off with a pass down field to the Wildcats. Camden McConnell going to run this one in practically untouched as he makes his way to the end zone for a score. Watch closely here. You might miss it, but it's going to be another pass to Wallace's Camden McConnell, who's going to tiptoe his way in and out of the end zone for another touchdown for the Wildcats, sending them to the half with a 27 nothing lead. The Wilcox Hildreth band, though, they are not going to be dismayed. We come back from the half. Wilcox trying to make a comeback, and they're all the way at the other end of the field when the Falcons, Gage Rittner, going to get a hold of it and just 
makes his way all the way down the field for the score. Wallace, though, laying a smackdown on Will Hill. They come away with a 49-6 dub. A beautiful sunset in Grand Island as the Crusaders, they take on the traveling fighting Irish. We're starting this one off. Jackson Roberts inches his way towards a touchdown that would help get the Irish into double digits. His teammate Gavin Nutter is going to get the job done after finding the open hole in a crowd of defenders. The Crusaders trying to make a comeback. A beautiful lob downfield to Marcus Lowry as he comes up with a difficult catch. What a snag. But they would come up short on the next long pass as Isaac Herbeck just can't haul that one in, given the Irish Irish another chance to score before the half. And it's a taste of their own medicine as the Irish throw a long one downfield to Will Motes for the complete pass. Roberts, he's going to run it in for six just before we go to the break. And the Irish, they take a 22 lead at the break. They go on to silence the Crusaders, 29-0. The Alliance Bulldogs, they travel to Hastings in hopes of their first win of the season against the Tigers. Well, the Tigers, they want that dub. The Bulldogs start off strong with an interception from Kellen Murr. However, Alliance just unable to make a play off of it. After a fumble recovery from Hastings, the Tigers' is Jet Samuelson going to race this one forward, weaving and dodging and ducking and finally making it to the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. 7-0 in favor of the Tigers. Start of the second quarter now. Jet Samuelson striking once more, turning on the Jets of sorts, earning Hastings another touchdown. The Bulldogs still unable, still unable to make a comeback as it's 21-0 Hastings at that point. And Tigers, they're earning that second win of the season, defeating the Bulldogs 30-18. Wood River Shelton looking to pick up a win on the road as they take on Donovan Trumbull. The Cardinals came out hot and heavy as Blake Dedimore returns the kickoff for 30 yards. DT would continue to look for him throughout the night as quarterback Jaden Williams with the pass to Dedimore, who would make his way for another first down and then some. This time the guards going for a running play to get the touchdown. And the black shirts would carry that momentum over to the defensive side. Eventually, though, the Silverbacks, they're going to turn things around as they would force a fumble, which gave them the oomph that they needed. Wide receiver Josh Lure, he's going to power his way in for a touchdown. Silverbacks would go on to take the 8-6 to six lead before the end of the first, and they go on to win their first ever game as a co-op team, 22-20 over the Cards. Well, the Wolves looking to take a bite out of the Eagles in the Loomis-Overton showdown. For those fans of old-school ground and pound, they were in for a treat. Shea Swanson works his way to the right side for a minor gain and, oh, a fourth down conversion to keep the drive alive. He's going to cash in several chunk plays later, racing to the left side to put Loomis on top, 6-0. The Wolves' defense looking to circle their prey. Chris, excuse me. Christian Blinkow and Gabe Kimball swarm Brody Fleischman, taking him down for the sack. And just when it looks like Fleischman might have something through the air, Gunnar Hadley comes flying in for the deflection. Loomis looking to add to it, but Brendan McCarter, he isn't having any of it as he comes up with a big tackle for loss in the backfield for the sophomore. A short-lived Selly, though, as Loomis, they come away with the impressive 44-0 shutout.